day baseball get that note to your teacher or to your boss slide away and enjoy a man looking to improve to a perfect eight and no it's not that they've handed him the Cy Young Award it's just that boy he is making a loud statement out of the gates Ah, just another day in paradise right here on the exclusive home of the Arizona Diamondbacks, FSN Arizona. Certainly glad to have you with us as the Diamondbacks look to make it on a positive series, a positive homestand. Otherwise, those boys from the east have come to their town and kicked them around a little bit. It's time to turn things in the other direction. Hi there once again, everybody. He's Mark Grace. I am Darren Sutton, and I'm really excited, quite honestly, because Hopefully it ends in a victory for the Diamondbacks, and then we go to Chicago, where this guy, he is known all around the town of Chicago as being the, the pub guy, the peanuts, and the beer guy. Isn't that correct? Well, Darren, you, you make a point, but I also like to go down to the Chicago Mu Museum of Art and maybe take in the Renoir display or maybe some Monet, something like that. That was fun, too. Well, I'm going to have to change this entire open now. So I guess when you're talking about Brandon Webb, if we're going with the finer things, we call each game for him brush by brush. But when you step back and you look at the last two plus seasons, it is for you, an art guy, it's a masterpiece. Oh, there's no question. Brandon Webb, he started on the streets and he had to learn his way up the ladder and he learned how to become a pitcher. He was a thrower, a lot of walks, gave up a lot of hits, but sl slowly but surely he made the right moves and he brought in the right strokes. Now he throws a masterpiece every single time he goes out or so it seems. Oh, I tell you what, what a painting it is. We will call it brush by brush today. Now here's the thing, if I'm going to go with the art theme as not the pub theme, there's nothing worse when you're an artist and you're you're making that gorgeous painting and the kids come in and just throw some paint on it, <laughs> fire some paint on it. They ruin it. In other words, the guys behind Brandon Webb, they've got to make the plays. Too many unearned runs of late, far too many errors. It's got to tighten up. You're exactly Exactly right. No malted milk spilled on your on your Renoirs. No, you don't want that. So you got got to tighten it up defensively all the way around outfield infield. Start getting a little better with the fundamentals and you'll be just fine. Guess what? By the way, you can talk all you want about art museums and red wine. We're about to prove you wrong. My friend, we know where you're off to the pub. The Diamondbacks going head to head with the Phillies. <laughs> I got your art. Back at Chase Field, Diamondbacks, Philadelphia Phillies. The Philadelphia Phillies getting ready to go with a bat in their hands. Here's their starting lineup. Victorino Bruntland, what a series he's had. Utley Howard, Jeff Jenkins, Greg Dobbs, so Taguchi has enjoyed Arizona. Chris Coast and Brett Myers. Mark, Mark, Darren, and you. And glad to have you with us. We are underway at Chase Field as Brandon Webb. Let's take a look at the Centex home pitching report. Wrapped around Brandon Webb. I don't know really what you can argue about there. It's pretty much every time this guy takes the mound, just press the tape recorder for what I'm going to say. Great sinker, and he just continues to win. And he hammers the inside corner there, a little comeback fastball. 0 and 2 the count to Shane Victorino, 27 year old switch hitter. Born in Wailuku, Hawaii. And the ground ball, Chris Burke leaves his feet. Can't make the play. Victorino will reach. Well, we talked about tightening up the defense, Darren, and first batter of the game. Short That's going to go as a hit, but it's certainly a play that needs to be made. So Connor Jackson, after that collision last night with the man just running down the line, Shane Victorino. Is available to pinch hit, obviously not in the starting lineup today. We'll start tomorrow in Chicago. Victorino, a very good base dealer. I would imagine he's going to be off to the races sometime soon. And that's just the way to, just a tough way to set the tone for today's game, Darren. A speed merchant. And the ball off the glove. And this is last night, Victorino and Connor Jackson.
he thought about going there as that one is away one and one the count. Well, when they came to town the Phillies you think well Jimmy Rollins won't be back until Friday and therefore you don't have to deal with Rollins Eric Bruntland. All right. Five for 15 a homer and seven RBIs later. Where's Jimmy Rollins you're wondering. He has had a great series for his skipper. One of the other reasons Gracie I think is the count is now one and two you push for Victorino to be going is the commonsensical fact that Webb's a ground ball pitcher. That's exactly right. And guys like Webb and the other sinker ballers we saw it yesterday with Kyle Kendrick of the Phillies if you just drop anchor over there and don't go you're just asking to hit into double plays. Eighty nine outs on the ground this year for Brandon Webb thirty one in the air and four double plays. One and two the count still not going and a ground ball foul ball. Quick peek of the defense for the Diamondbacks. E got by him out there. Brought to you by Rico. Infielders of Reynolds, Drew, Ojeda, and Burke will certainly have a lot to do. Outfield of Burns, Young, and Upton with Snyder behind home plate. Miss Burke over there at first. Bob Gritzmacher had a had a tough run at that one out there. Down that left field line as that one is away. Grits mocker or grits maker? Is it grits maker? Grits mock. Well, if he's from the south, he might be a grits maker. Ooh, little cheese grits. Yeah. Oh, butter, cheese. Big league. One of the golden glovers out there. Gary Brawley down the right field line. Bouncing ball, runner not going. Slow hit ball though. Did he have a shot at the lead runner? He gets Eric Brunton. Certainly looked like he did, but he chose the safe way and got the sure out at first base. So no double play. Victorino's not going on the pitch. As you can see, there's the ground ball. And I think he easily would have had him at second base. But outs are outs. Outs are outs, but a speedy man is now in scoring position in exactly. front of Chase Utley. Thirteen home runs, twenty-seven RBIs. Chase Utley hitting three fifty on the year. He's three for eleven. He's been walked three times, struck out three times in this series. And you can see the defense playing around to pull. Outfield as well. One and one the count. Just blew a sinker right by him. Bell tie. Might be a good time to be a little bit careful with Mr. Utley. He's been relatively quiet, even though he did drive in the winning run last night. But it was on one of those five hoppers perfectly placed through the infield, so. You've kept him in the ballpark for three days. That's something no, no other team can say. Curveball misses away. Two and one the count. Mike Owings having to deal last night with Chase Utley. Balance, preparation, all things that a lot of hitters talk about, but at a breakneck speed he embraces those parts of his game is that one gets by Snyder boy a tough night last night and has trickled into today. Well I believe Chris Snyder sitting outside now he's sitting in the middle of the plate. And he just misses it again. I don't. Hmm. And that is ruled a pass ball on Snyder. Oh, you're not used to seeing this out of Chris Snyder. No. Three and one the count. Utley drills it right center field. Chris Young, he's got room. He's shy of the track, makes the play. So on a bouncing ball that went to the right side, off the glove of the first baseman, followed up by a ground ball to short in which the play was made at first allowing the runner to move up and a passed ball a sack fly makes it one to nothing. So that goes an earned run I guess it does. 
even though the pass ball led to the sacrifice fly. Well, now wait a minute. I'm not quite sure about that. Yeah, we'll have I mean, to. a fly ball there does not drive in a run. That's exactly right. And then a single off a infielder's glove. Those kids are throwing <laughs> soda pop and Kool Aid all over his masterpiece again, aren't they, Darren? Yes, they are. One and one to count. It may tie into how Gracie the inning plays out. Lift it into the seats. Ryan Howard. This is another guy that you know at some point will be toward offensively. It isn't yet. That's over the inside corner. Webb takes care of business himself. Ballpark one to nothing the score that is an unearned run that is hung on Brandon Webb. So Bob Melvin looks to his offense to pick it up. Southwest Airlines brings the starting lineup. Eric Burns, Augie Ojeda, Chris Young. So Burns moves up. Chris Young moves down. Justin Upton, Stephen Drew, Mark Reynolds, Snyder, Burke, Webb, one through nine. And Brett Myers takes the baseball, the right-hander who in his last outing racked up 10 strikeouts against San Francisco. Last year served as a closer as the fastball misses away. One and oh the count. Mark Grace tell us about the stuff of Mr. Myers. Now a good fastball in the low 90s then one of the better breaking balls in the game. Hard curveball. It's not one of those slow curveballs like a Brandon Webb has a slow curve. Brett Myers has a very hard power curve. Popped up right side. And Eric Burns is erased. Burns in his last 11 games including today has just five hits. Heading 120 during that span really struggling. Hoping that he's coming out of it. He's had a hit in each of his last three games, but still not seeing the signs that he wants. Yeah, even the even the last two hits have been infield hits. And here's Augie Ojeda. Over the outside corner to Augie. Has never faced Brett Myers. Eric Burns is now one for seven against the right hander. But when they picked up Brad Lidge, the Philadelphia Phillies, they made a decision. Mr. Myers back into the starting rotation you go. He didn't really know how he felt about it. He enjoyed the ninth inning. Well, I think that's the right move. Brett Myers is a starter. And once you decide once you've got Brad Lidge. Lidge is not a starter. Myers came up as a starter. He knows how to do it. He knows how to conduct himself on the mound as a starter. Knows how to prepare during the other four days. I like the move. I think this guy is much better. And much more valuable to the Phillies as a starter. He's a big boy, too, by the way. Big old corn fed boy. Augie lifts that one into the seats. Ah, that doesn't tell the whole story now. Come on. He had a few more LBs, maybe an inch. Are you saying those numbers are a little skewed on the low side? Mm. Maybe like 255 or something? Two and a half. About six five. There's that power curve right there. Sixty one up and forty nine down in his major league career. ERA of about four point three. His year last year was twenty one saves. In fifty one appearances. As Augie fouls that one off. You give Augie a start and he delivers. Jeff Salazar can say the same thing. As a starter this year, Augie's got 11 hits in six games. Not much more to say about that. He drove in six RBIs in a start on Saturday, last time Brandon Webb went to work. And you can't stand guys like that who oh. just pick and pick and foul off pitches. Foul up, um, put it in play already. I'm laying it in there for you. Put it in play already is what Myers says. I don't want to walk you. 
But that's what he's in danger of doing as long as Augie just continues to be a pest. It's an interesting move. Chris Young to the three hole. Lined into center field. What an at bat for Augie Ojeda. Man, what a job. Has the defense on the move? Quickly, we'll tell you about it. Taguchi, Victorino, Jenkins. Dobbs plays third, usually the pinch hitter extraordinaire. Bruntlett, Udley, Howard, and Chris Coast. Longtime minor leaguer. Nearly a thousand games in the minors before he got his call. Gracie, I guess you'd say he's a regular Crash Davis. <laughs> That's As why I that love one is said. low. One and oh the count. How about this? Yeah, just short and simple and effective. Augie Ojeda just continues to shine. Lift it, deep left. Taguchi going back to the wall. Five. I think he likes the three hole. Amazing about Chris Young, Darren, is he didn't really hit this ball. He just missed it. And it still gets a couple of rows deep. That's how strong that young man is. Because we've seen when he hits him, he can hit him into Friday's front row. Yep. He got it off the end of the bat just to shave, but he's just so stinking strong. Homer. How many 20 year old cleanup men are in the game right now, Darren? <laughs> how many 20 year olds are in the game outside of this young man? Brandon Webb suddenly has some support. Guys weren't picking him up with the gloves. They are with the bat. Oh dear. Over the top of that one. One and two the count. You know Myers will challenge you. And when you challenge you'll give him up. Roy Oswald one of the aces in the game no doubt. De Francis known as the ace of the Rockies. Arroyo the Reds all of them giving up the long ball. And to, to quote one of my favorite announcers. Bronson Arroyo is not fooling a living breathing soul this year. I heard about that. That's, our, that's our buddy count. Marty Brenneman. In that outing against the Atlanta Braves. It's one of uh, one of the great listens of the year oh. that first inning. Marty Brenneman. I, I can't get enough of Marty Brenneman. I just love listening to him do games. He has earned the right to tell it like it is with all the time and he has always done that. Slider down and away. Upton had a chance last night to pinch hit. Was uh, opening things up a bit on a swing if you will. Three and two. Myers just goes down and away. That's a beautiful slider. Upton doggone it. Chris Young, by the way, eight home runs, 19 RBIs right down the middle with Stephen Drew. Stephen in his last four games, he has seven hits, hitting 389 during that time. Breaking ball. So he's got the, the curveball and the slider. He's got the curve and the slider. Slider more to right handers, but that time he broke it, broke it out on the back door there to Stephen Drew. That was a nice pitch. I think the homer made him mad. Change up. You see, the great thing for Stephen Drew now is he's seen all his pitches here in the first inning. His first at bat, he's seen the slider, the change up, the fastball. He won't be fooled in the third or fourth inning, his next at bat, by anything he hadn't seen. Tired of waiting. Car early on. Brett takes a walk, gets back up on that rubber. The native of Jacksonville, Florida.
Steven sees a change up to right field. Jeff Jenkins covers the ground and makes the play. Chris Young moved to the third spot in the order. Let me dig in. I think I like this spot quite a bit. Well, that's perplexing. That's a very good question. We'd like to know, too. Two to one the score. Arizona leads it. <laughs> Todd Walsh. Todd will be back tomorrow, guys. Oh, he's going to Chicago, is he? I think he gets he, to go to Chicago. I think he's ahead scouting as Jeff Jenkins lifts that one into the seats. Well, I just got a postcard from him yesterday from Legoland. <laughs> and which is funny, and I don't know if he and uh, what, what's... Janet What's the lovely Janet? Janet I don't know if they have a private jet because the day before I got an email from Euro Disney really from Todd where, where is Euro Disney it's over there in Europe, Europe. <laughs> so Paris, Todd France. actually has time to send emails he's not reading them that's exactly right well we're, we're happy to have you Mac glad oh, to be dear. here I'll be back for the Royal Series no, thank they, you sir <laughs> so you don't get to go to Chicago you get uh, you get to come back for the Royals Royals and A's. Yeah, Jose Guillen and Mark Grudzelanek will be happy to see you. Beautiful change up to Jeff Jenkins. And on one two, a bouncing ball. A big surprise. It's gobbled up by Augie Ojeda. So maybe they get back on the right track with a couple of runs, and we tie it into our Brown and Brown Chevrolet key to the game we're talking about artists mark grace and you have some advice well every every great artist pays great attention to detail and and let me give you an example of how the diamondbacks gave up a run in the first inning and we'll i'll just kind of talk about it as the game goes first batter of the game off of burke's glove at first base for it went as a base hit but it's a play that that is made more often than it's not wouldn't you say darren yes because that one's tapped foul now the next batter grounds to short. Okay, Stephen Drew had a play at second base for the force out. Decided to go to first base, got the out, but gave up 90 feet. Are you following me? Now uh, the next batter. Now you got an out and a guy on second base. The next batter, Utley, he's a, a pass ball, gets Victorino to third base as that one's tapped to shortstop. Stephen Drew will make that play easily. And then he ends up scoring on a sacrifice fly. So so there were no errors made, but it was just those little detaily type things that the Diamondbacks didn't pay attention to in the top of the first inning that led to a run. Makes all the sense in the world to me. An artist or a ball player. The same thing. Attention to detail makes makes perfectly good sense. And I mean, if you're a writer, that's the symbolism. Twenty seven unearned runs it might not have been an error. But it was an unearned run. Because of the pass that's ball. exactly right but but then also just the detail ish like stuff that's a, that's a play Chris Burke's going to make more often than not didn't get it made Stephen Drew elected to go to first instead of take the force play. So you give up that valuable 90 feet. So Brandon Webb just says all right I'm just going to eat three batters up and get three ground balls. And with the glove on their hand, the boys in red had some attention to detail as well. Welcome back to Chase Field. 2-1 Diamondbacks going to the bottom of the second inning. Well, I want to talk about a fundamentally sound baseball player, Augie Ojeda. Two hands, head right on the ball, come up, front, point that front shoulder right to your target, and make the play. That's just perfectly done. Two hands. They even do it in the big leagues, all you little leaguers out there that want to use one hand. Pay attention to what this kid does, Augie Ojeda. That's a very fundamentally sound baseball player that you should copy. Reynolds went around there, and the one thing that Augie Ojeda, when he was trying to make the Diamondbacks in spring training 07, that always came up was he could play any position on the infield and he'd make every play. As Reynolds fouls that one off and he's backed it up. He's got good hands. Well, he's got great hands great feet. And, and like and, and he pays attention to the details of the game Darren. Right. 
I know we have a Geico quote. I'm sure it's already prepared, but Mark Reynolds looked at me this morning and said, Sut, I just want to square one up. Just square one up. How's that? Sounds good to me. And he'll be the first to tell you he didn't really square it up. He got jammed a little bit, but you know what? He's so doggone strong that even when he gets jammed, he can get it out there safely into the outfield. When he's talking square one up, he means hammer one into the seats. <laughs> this ball gets in on him a little bit, but I like to see Mark Reynolds going the other way on a breaking ball. That that means he's close. He's getting close. Well, let's be honest. I mean, a guy like Mark Reynolds, who will always battle the strikeout bug, he's not always going to square one up even when he does put in play. Those are good signs. All those RBIs he had early in the year, they weren't all from home runs. Not at all. Not at all. We had a good chuckle with him this morning down in the locker room. He said, when I got to first base, I told Ryan Howard, well, I guess you and I are going to be battling for the strikeout total this year. <laughs> Ryan Howard said, I've got that title already. You can have it anytime you want. <laughs> Ryan Howard struck out 199 times last year. And he's not about to apologize for it. But he also hits a bunch of balls into the seats. Line drive, left field, base hit, Snyder. Snyder's starting to swing the bat awfully well. Another one off the end of the bat here, Darren, but the fastball just off the end and out in front of Sotoguchi for another clean base hit. And Diamondbacks got something going. And boy, if you're ever rooting for a guy to get off the schneid, it's this feller digging into the batter's box. This kid's a good player. He's just having a rough go of it. Just two for 26 against right handers this year. As he takes a fastball and you would be too if every pitch was like that's that. That's what I'm saying. When you're struggling, you're hitting 130. You get pitches like that. Knee high, outside corner, you, you can't do anything with. It's just bad luck. Now that was a hanging breaking ball, something he could have done something with. But well, it, it's just another scenario, Darren, when you're struggling. It seems like you're 0 2 before you even get in the batter's box. He seems to find himself, for whatever the reason, Chris Burke pinch hitting against the world's finest closers. So, oh, I had to do that my last year in the big leagues, and it wasn't fun. Grace, grab a bat. All right, cool, cool. Who's pitching? Gagne. Huh? Well, Grace, grab a bat. Who's pitching? Billy Wagner. That's a hard, that's a hard job to do. Face the. Best closers in the world. They're closers for a reason. They don't give up much. And back when Gagne was with the Dodgers, not the not the Brewers, Gagne. A different man this year, no doubt. On the ground, toward short. There's one. Burke, double play. And the struggles continue. That's too bad. Well, you had such an inning going. Picture number 17, Brandon Webb. Want to remind everyone about Family Fridays. You can purchase a Family Friday ticket pack for just 15 bucks. Here's what you get a ticket to the game, medium Pepsi, Diamondback Dog, a free pass to the Phoenix Zoo, post game fireworks, courtesy of Gila River Casino, 602. 514 8400 or hop online. That's not fair to do that to Brandon Webb, is it? First pitch breaking ball right in the outside corner. Sit tight here, Gracie. He's about to drive this run in. <laughs> no. That's enough. Let me get my cough button. Now, what's he doing here? Throwing him two straight breaking balls. <laughs> oh, and two the count. You all right over there? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Four to, RBIs. I, well, Barry Zito's not pitching. Four RBIs. Barry Zito is not pitching. Leave Barry Brett alone. Myers is. Mm. That's respect there, folks. Three straight sliders to a man with four RBIs. 
two to one. It's just kind of a different feeling when you're playing one run games and you're playing close games and you're not doing it offensively, you know you have to be really good on the defensive end and that pitching and defense kind of got us where we were last year and then all of a sudden you start scoring 10 runs a game, winning by six, seven runs. Now you get into those closer games and it just feels a little bit more tense. So, you know, we're going to play a lot of close games this year. We're not going to beat everybody by 10 runs, you know, over the course of the season. But like I said, we have the guys out there that we feel like defensively can get it done. That's awfully well said. He just pretty much let everybody know that, uh, yeah, in close games, you gotta you gotta start making the plays and you gotta start doing the things it takes that, that like they did last year. Last year they won a lot of one-run games in close games, and early in the year they weren't really weren't pressed to make the big play in the big situation. This year in the close games, that's escaping them. One to know the count to Chris Coast. A lot of people were talking about these Diamondbacks when they were just pummeling teams big big run differential and saying well let's see when they start playing closer games let's see a how they respond with regard to heart and you've talked about you like the heart of this team and let's see how they respond with runners in scoring position when they really must get a hit and defensively. Steven Drew. There's a response and post is erased. All right, Darren, you were talking about how Brett Myers threw three breaking balls to strike out Brett Brandon Myers. Webb. Is a turnabout fair play here, or is he just going to go right with the power sinker? Oh, I like the one pitch, one out approach. Do you? Okay. But we'll see. He swings. Well, that's a ground ball out. I was going to say, you, you got to swing, Brett. 0 for 13. Yeah, you don't even bother with breaking balls, the guys that are 0 for 13. I got underneath that one. Elbow a little bit lower. It's high. One and one the count. Webby 7 and 0 with a 2.49 ERA. 3 and 0 at home. ERA over 4 at home. On the road, 4 and 0 with an ERA just over 1. Not swinging it at all. One and two the count. Well, he just got one up under his chin, so maybe that made him a little re more reluctant to dig in there. Fastball or change up here? Let's see. Fastball. Good Fastball. Night. Well, he had to throw more pitches than I wanted, but all of them would have been ground ball outs. Center fielder. Yeah, Brett Myers looked like he just wasn't in any real hurry to do much hitting there. Inside corner 0 and 1 the count to Shane Victorino. Well, what a thing of beauty that was that fastball in the inside corner what he calls the comebacker. There was another one didn't get the call. That's this is the first pitch watch it come back to the inside corner right on the button strike one didn't get the second call. Curveball. Have you noticed he's thrown fewer curveballs this year as and a whole? Because his changeup is so much more improved this year. That's his second pitch now. The curveball's always been his second pitch. Not anymore. Bouncing ball. This is going to be a tough play. Augio hit a field. Fires. Got him. Augio hit it. Ah, the boys are tightening things up, making the fabulous defensive plays. Mark McClune back with you at the ballpark. The Diamondbacks have the lead on the Phillies. And Brett Myers, very serious today as Myers, but he was all jokes in uh, in spring training. Played a joke on last night's starter, Kyle Kendrick, telling him he'd been traded to the Yomiuri Giants for Kobayashi Iwamura. Of course, Kendrick, being a uh, first-year player, didn't realize that it was a joke, and the joke was on him. They had the entire uh, Phillies uh, uh, media involved as well, and uh, Phillies, um, the Phillies uh, radio analyst, Larry uh, 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 Larry Anderson was in on as well guys. Yeah and it was uh, it was the joke was on Kendrick certainly. Oh and to the count to Eric Burns he bought in hook line and sinker. 
So they got the rookie, did they? They got the young man, and you know Charlie Manuel's going to allow that to happen, have a little fun. You got to have fun in this game. Three pitches and Burns, the struggles continue. 0 for 2 today, 1 for 8 in his career against Brett Myers. Just a breaking ball right up in the zone. Just swung right over the top of it. Is the sinker ball specialist. I think he's got a bright future ahead of him. As a pitcher or as the butt of jokes? Either one. Doesn't matter. You gotta be able to take a joke if you in the big leagues to me. I agree with you. Augie rolls that one foul. One and one the count. And you see the work that he did last night. Charlie Manuel is pitching coach Rich Doobie. Made it clear to Kyle Kendrick, I'd like to see you on the top bench, top step, curve ball and a strike. Watching Brandon Webb go to work, you can learn a lot from him. He absolutely can. Now he doesn't have the same type of sinker. Yeah, he's got the sinker, but not the same type. Webb's goes more down where Kendrick's is more going across. But either way, they're still quality pitches. To the bag and making the play for the out. Want to remind everyone, all the fans out there, for every home run the D backs hit this season, Fulton Homes will donate $150 to the Central Arizona Search and Rescue Fund. And today, well, Chris Young has hit a fastball off of Brett Myers for a home run. I will be shocked if he gets a fastball in the zone. This at bat. And I would be wrong. In the zone, though. I mean, that was in the zone, but that's a pretty good pitch. I would I'm wrong. Thank you for the effort, Darren. I appreciate you having my back, but I, I was wrong. I gotta stand by you, you know. Hey, now see that's what I was that's thinking. A good pitch. I was thinking he might get a fastball, but it'll be in that area. Something to make him move to set up these breaking balls. He's got his good breaking ball now. One and two the count Myers has him way but that's the slider that's the slider and a pretty darn good one too. So he has command of a hard breaking ball and the softer one. Mm. Framed up by coast as if to say. Did you have that up or out. Yeah exactly and, and right now Myers in a pretty good groove he's throwing the ball right where he wants to. Living up to the graphic, Chris Young goes down on strikes, but he also has a two-run homer in this ball game because of it. Arizona leads it by. <laughs> Top of the fourth inning, Diamondbacks clinging to a one-run lead. Now is the time for our Aflac trivia question. Since 1980, name the three National League pitchers to start a season with wins in eight. Or more consecutive starts since 1980. That's a good question. We've had a couple of good questions back to back now. Last night's? Yeah, last night's question about the Diamondbacks with the best career record against the Phillies. I got a couple. One of them was Todd Stottlemyre, remember? Oh, one, yeah, yeah. One yeah. Of the pitchers. I, I gave that question the, the business. It was tough. Bit. It was tough. It was a tough question, but I got a call from Todd Stottlemyre last night saying, hey, that was a really cool question. Oh, good and, for you. Yeah, so he was he was very appreciative. Of, uh, of that question. So, uh, so that's a, and this today's is a good question as well. Over the outside corner, one and one the count. How's he doing? Everything all right? He's just like any other former ball player. He's lazy. <laughs> well, that's great, man. It's all. It's probably got to be fun for the guys. They have a chance to be within an earshot of our telecast to know that they've been part of the history for the Diamondbacks. That. That they are remembered on occasion. That's, That's nice. Right. He called you. One and two, the count. Brandon Webb certainly is writing a lot of history books as a pitcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks. 
since about midway last summer. He has been a dominating force in Major League Baseball. That one in. It's Eric Brunton. Boy, you hate to hit a guy one and two with the heart of the order coming up. Second baseman Chase Utley. Brunton and Burke, a couple of teammates, a couple of utility players together at first base for the Astros. In fact, it was Burke, it was Bruntlett, it was Lidge that broke bread together and had lunch yesterday. And then Burke said, I could have just stopped at lunch. I didn't have to face Mr. Lidge when the game was on the line in the ninth. I just stop at lunch. That's fine. That didn't look like much fun. That's as good as he's looked from back in the day, for lack of better words, Brad Lidge. He had the slider from Hades going. Oh. Two and oh the count to Chase Utley. See how much we can live off of with a guy like Utley. The theory that a pitcher like Webb ahead two and oh is sometimes equally as dangerous. With an aggressive hitter. Nah, not Utley. Taken all the way. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if he was taken all the way or if he was just looking out over the plate and it came back in. Because I, I don't know too many legitimate power hitters like Utley is that's just taken all the way to an O. But maybe he was. I don't know. We'll ask him. <laughs> he is an interesting man to talk hitting with. We talked about this yesterday. Setting pitchers up is something he is known for. Tireless video work, and if you'd like a little help on your swing, he'll take a look at it with you. Drives it to left. His old teammate at UCLA makes the play. Brutlett and Burke get back together. A couple of Astros last night. It was Burke and Lidge, and this is what Gracie's talking about: just the stuff returning from Lidge. 97 mile an hour fastball, and then that gorgeous slider. And Chris Burke says, "Let's just stick with lunch." I liked you when you were on my team. The good news is if uh, Lidge continues to throw balls like that pitches like that he'll make a heck of a lot of money and he'll buy lunch the whole time. <laughs> Runner goes throw down and change up. Not in time. Eric Bruntlett is just finding a way to contribute any way shape or form he can. Well, Brandon Webb just kind of fell asleep on Bruntlett there. Good jump. No chance. Webb, one of those guys that has always been pretty easy to run on. Another change up, one and one the count. Three stolen bases for Bruntlett. One and one the count to the slugger Howard. The 2 1. You can see the elbow drop just a little bit, and that pitch stayed high. 3 and 1 the count, one out. Lafayette High School in St. Louis is where Ryan Howard played his high school baseball. Not drafted. Southwest Missouri State. Then got a chance, the Phillies took notice. Change up on 3 and 1. How good was that? This is as good as it gets right here. Three and one. You got this big old Henry Rascal with power up there. And what do you do? You just pull the string. You see how far out in front Howard is. I think it's time for another. He did 
Dome a changeup. Gives up all of his power as he grounds it to Burke. Burke to Webb. And the second out of the inning is put in the books. Bruntland moves up to third. Yeah, you didn't get the strikeout, but you know what? In that in that scenario, that's just as almost as good as a strikeout. You get to you get that big former MVP to take a swing like that. He's not going to do much with it. There is nothing better if you're on the mound than seeing that man in that position hitting. Wade out front. Oh. A very dirty Bruntlet over at third base. One and zero the count to Jeff Jenkins. So far, seven ground ball outs, two outs in the air, and two strikeouts. Change up in and <laughs> out in front was Jenkins. Jeff 0 for 1 today, 3 for 21 in his career against Brandon Webb, and that's not a surprise. Broke his bat. Mark Reynolds. A little tap dance over there. Got to admit, gave me a little bit of a scare. Sheriff? <laughs> uh, it's still now just a happy souvenir for a fan. Could have won the score. Justin Upton to lead things off against Affleck. Brett Myers. Quick answer of our Aflac trivia question. Three NL pitchers to start the season. Affleck. As Upton goes to work and takes a pitch outside. Andy Hawkins. Wow. Pedro and Fernando. <laughs> Brandon Webb looking to start off 8-0. Andy Hawkins. Yeah. It's going to be tough sledding here for Brandon Webb because Brett Myers is on his A game now. He's got those breaking balls. I mean, right on the button. Sliders down. He's starting the slider right at the knees, and it's dropping out of the zone. Guys still are looking to swing, and I don't blame him. Got that slow curveball he's commanding, and plenty of giddy up on his fastball. And you talk about Gracie fastball command that's such a big part of pitching he is painting. Justin struck out on a slider in the first. That was the curveball. About good, good patience. About what 86 or 7 is the slider and then the curveball high 70s. That is sounds that about, about right? right. Yeah. And the fastball 90 to 93. Good at bat by the youngster. <laughs> Justin Upton in his last nine games, including today, has 11 hits and six walks. 11 hits and six walks. I don't know if I've told you folks, if you're just tuning in, we need more signs at the ballpark. If you are coming out to the game, if you could bring a sign, I would appreciate that. And they need to be Mark Grace signs if possible. <laughs> You don't like rattle the Phillies? I like any sign. Yeah, come on. Well, happy birthday. I would imagine it's the young lady who's celebrating her birthday. Well, happy birthday. The Dutch? Is that what that said? The mm -hmm. Dutch loves the D backs? I'm Mrs. Greasy. Outside. <laughs> one and one the count. It's good to have Bob's wife here. Yeah, we got some signs. I like that. Oh, the youngsters. Now that's even better to find out who some of the youngsters are here today. That's great, isn't it? Fun at the yard. Place to be, kids, I'm telling you. Two and two, the count. 
Diamondbacks doing a good job now laying off those breaking balls down. Steven fly to right field back in the first inning. Steven's got six RBIs in his last four games. Including that three run homer a couple of nights ago. Got a lot of youngsters here today. I like it. And with signs. The 2 2. It's high, 3 and 2 the count. Now, if I'm Bob Melvin here, I have to send the runner. I got to try to make things happen. Put a little pressure on the Philly defense. Put a little pressure on Brett Myers to throw a strike. Stephen Drew handles the bat pretty well. Upton's got good speed. Try to make a big inning out of this thing. Runner goes. Drew pounds it foul. Boy, he hit his spot down. We'll do it again. Upton had a terrible jump there. But in this situation, Darren, you're not trying to steal the base. You're just trying to be in motion, open up some holes. You're gambling right now if you're Bob Melvin on Steve Drew putting the ball in play. He was buckled and dove back in. He looked like he got caught really not watching the pitcher. Got to pay attention out there. Expect going to be going again. Three and two the count. A very short lead from Upton. Car. Boo, they say. Yeah, I don't blame you. Throw it to the plate already, they say. You already had your chance with Upton. <laughs> Runner goes. It's outside. Ball four. Back to back walks now to here to start the fourth. That's where you got to take advantage now, Darren. As an offense, you kind of take the attitude, all right, if you're going to dig yourself a hole and walk people and put people on base, we're going to make you pay. Opportunity in the third inning. You had first and second nobody out. A double play into that rally. Now, if you're the Diamondback offense, you got to make him pay. I'm feeling it here. Are you? Oh, yes. Uh-oh. He's feeling it, folks. You heard it. 1 and 0 oh, the count or 0 oh and 1 I should say is a slider as a strike. Still feeling it. All right. 66 pitches for the right-hander Myers. Couple of runners out there. I told you I was feeling a base hit. <laughs> a broken bat into 19 pieces. 18 hopper to short. Bases loaded, nobody out. I was feeling a bomb, folks. But you know what? With the way Myers is dealing, as you said, you've got to take advantage. Uh, Mark Reynolds has got sneaky good speed. He just gets buzzsawed here by a Brett Myers fastball. And then it's just determination. Pure hustle and determination. Out of the box he goes. That's a good call by Jerry Meals. It was Ty goes to the runner. That was the correct call by Jerry Meals, the first base umpire. Now it's time to do big damage. Bases loaded, nobody out. That pitch is high, 1-0 to Chris Snyder. 
Snyder is singled back in the second inning. 13 hits, last 14 games, hitting 395 and an on base of about 500. Is that as a way 2 0? Right now, Brett Myers is officially asking for it. So Upton, Drew, and Reynolds to load up the bases. A lot of grand slams have been hit on this pitch right here, Darren Sutton. Down the line it goes. Into the corner. It's off the base of the wall. One run is in. Drew right behind. They'll stop Reynolds. A double and a pair of RBIs for Chris Steiner. And the Diamondbacks lead it 4-1. to one. Talk about a man with a raising goal of that batting average. It is skyrocketing. And that's Chris Snyder. Well, uh, this is a hitter's dream right here. Bases loaded. 2 0 count. Fastball right down the middle and just scalded again by Chris Snyder. Well, if he could have elevated that ball at all, that would have been that grand slam we were calling for. But Bob Melvin and the D backs will take it. That's what you do. If a guy's going to put a couple of runners out there, free bases, you punish him. Good for Chris Snyder and the rest of the D-back offense. Chris, on April 20th, was hitting 178. The batting average now is close to 280. Now batting first baseman, Chris Kirk. Five for eight in this series. You can see the batting average now. Jumped up to 282 on the year. Again, 178 on April 20th. Right here, if you're Chris Burke, if you can hit a ground ball up the middle. Middle infielders are conceding the run. Just a little ground ball, give you another run lead and move Chris Snyder to third base with nobody out. The New York Mets took two of three from the Diamondbacks. The Phillies have taken the first two of three. Not only game by game playing to win every game, but a little bit at stake here, pride wise. Oh, that was it right there. Doggone it, Chris Burke. He's going to get it. But boy, that's just frustrating for a hitter. You get that pitch you've been looking for, and you foul it back. Now you gotta probably have to hit this breaking ball here. One and two, the count as the breaking ball is wide. Just looking for contact, any kind of contact, if you can, from Chris Burke. Love of the diving Dobbs. Everybody's safe. Another run. He got contact and he played it a run. Oh boy, Chris Burke, you deserve that one. And that's all it takes is contact. Great effort there by Dobbs, but off the glove it goes. The run scores and Chris Snyder had to stay at second, but it's not all bad because all that does is just set up Brandon Webb for a sacrifice bunt. The defense gets together. Chip Hale comes down, talks with Brandon. Four sack bunts this year. And certainly creeping in Dobbs, creeping in Howard. Outfield very shallow. Slash. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute, Darren. Brandon Webb feeling that good with the bat? No, that won't get the job done. So now Eric Burns will have to hit with first and second instead of second and third. Now 
Now in that situation, a pitcher like Brandon Webb doesn't do that on his own, does he? I, mean, that, oh, I think he absolutely did that on really? his own. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, you're taught if the if the infielders, if the corner infielders are just in your face, then pull back and slash. But really, the 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 corner infielders really weren't. Eric Burns puts it on the ground. There's one. Where is it? Everybody's safe. Utley never gained control of the baseball. The bases are loaded with one out. And I'm sure that will go as an error on Chase Utley. That's a really nice play by Bruntlett. Oh, yeah, that is a flat out kick. Fielder's choice, E4. the play. Tagging and coming on down is Chris Snyder. The Diamondbacks lead it six to one. Ojeda, his ninth RBI of the year. Well, he's just always doing something to help. Always putting together a big at bat in a big situation. Seagram scored earlier. Driving in a run now. <laughs> oh boy, those ball players, and I love eavesdropping. I know you do. And they, they literally cannot stop giving each other the business. Augie comes up with a great at bat. You could hear one of his teammates say, That's gone in any other ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> one and one the count. I don't see why. Let's see why it's sick. Come on, baby. See why it's Chris Young. You could hear Rick Shue, hitting coach. Come on, see why. See it. See it. In other words, lay off those sliders. See it and lay off of it. That one was up. I think he saw it pretty good. Yeah. And that's what that's what see it means. Recognize it. And then go. Don't just anticipate a fastball. Don't just assume it's going to be a fastball. See it and then go to it. And that's what Rick Shue was talking about. Out front, popped it up. Brutlet puts that one away. Nine Diamondbacks got a chance to hit. Against Brett Myers. That one was a big one. <laughs> FSN Arizona presents D backs baseball brought to you by Jack in the Box, where we don't make it until you order it. And by Sonic, it's not just good, it's Sonic good. Brandon Webb, first pitch swinging, leaving his feet. Across the diamond, Mark Reynolds. Greg Dobbs is erased. You throw strikes, those guys behind you will move to their toes a lot more. And there's an example. Yeah, just a super so play. By the sheriff. When he does things like this, he's the sheriff. Just smothers it, makes a good strong throw across the diamond. And quickly, after a four, after a four-run bottom of the fourth, quickly out number one. So Taguchi. Oh, and won the count. Firestone leaderboard coming across in your living room as that one misses inside. Major League leaders and wins. You see Cliff Lee, what a season he is having. He's been incredible. Change up. And the count is one and two. After really struggling last year, Cliff Lee. I mean, he is Steve Carlton this year. Another change up. And so Taguchi is erased. 
The Diamondbacks mid July went to Milwaukee last year and they were trying to hold their spot in the National League West and the Brewers sure, took it to them goes. taking three of four. They went into Chicago and lost the first game there. Then Brandon Webb was the victor on July 25th beating the Cubs. Went on a scoreless inning streak. I'm going to tell you what he has been pitching and dealing ever since. The D backs played their way into the playoffs. And Brandon Webb, since that series in Chicago, is 17 and 2. Pretty decent. Stay with it, big boy. In on the hands of Chris Coast. The right hander from the Bluegrass State. Murphy's Bleacher, Chicago, Illinois. Never a bad place to visit, and they certainly know that man. Join us over the Windy City weekend for the next three games tomorrow. We'll be on the air at 11, pregame, postgame, on Fox on Saturday with Gracie and Kenny Albert, and then back your way Sunday at 11 a.m. D-backs at Cubs should be a great weekend rematch of the division series in which the Diamondbacks swept the Baby Bears from Chicago. By the way, just got a uh, little uh, info from a buddy of mine back in Chicago. I hope you uh, brought your long underwear. Really? A little chilly back there, and it's going to be this weekend. I don't have long underwear anymore. Well, you're a Milwaukee guy. you got to have long underwear. I left it there. Did you? Yes, I uh, did. Probably a smart move. One and two, the count. Mm. One and three. Ends up taking that one right down the middle and up and looking for something else. Hey, if you're watching out at sliders, we're a little bit envious of you, by the way. And if you ever have a chance, even if you're not coming into the yard on a day like today, on a day game, night game after work, head over there. And we know you, you guys can hear us out there. As that one has popped up. We have been able to sample some of the finer fare today, some of the great pizza and the wings. And I uh, want to thank Lars and his right hand ladies that brought stuff over. You know me, I'm about good food, and they are all about it. Oh, yeah. Scott Snyder is in attendance. Good nice to see him there. there. Studley, nice to see him. Yes, it was very, very nice of Lars and his beautiful ladies to bring us some grub. It's a big league. Have you ever seen me turn away food like that? No. <laughs> it's a quick response, isn't it, folks? He didn't even have to think. Well, let me see. It was just no. Two steps out. He's waiting on Myers. One and two the count. Six to one the score. And the pitch is low. Two and two. It'll be interesting to see as we watch this ball game progress with Brandon Webb. 62 pitches through five innings. Those gentlemen are stretching out there, but will they work? I wash. Even Drew hooks that base. Oh, just great speed from Stephen Drew. A change up that he gets out a little bit out in front, but he gets extended and just hooks it down the line, as you said, Darren. Takes a bit of a funny hop on Jeff Jenkins by the time he gathers it. Stephen Drew says, heck with it, guys. I'm going to third. And he gets in sliding. Right back through the box, Mark Reynolds. A three-hit day. He squared that one up, Darren. He didn't waste any time either. And good for the shot.
chair. Stephen Drew, by the way, dirt, as Gracie likes to call him. Remember, early in the game, he hooked the ball just like that that Jenkins took extra bases away from. This one was a little more on the line, on a line rather than a fly ball. As you can see, the athleticism comes into play on that graphic. Just athletes up and down this lineup, speed. Speed and gaps power. Mark McLoon, what do you have for us? Double last uh, inning, and uh, Ducks are on the pond right now. Guys, he's been locked in in batting practice earlier in the series. He hit three out off Brian Price, the first guy to ever do that. He hit fastball, curveball, and then forkball out, and the uh, cage exploded with applause after that. No one had ever seen anybody take pitching coach Brian Price deep three straight times. So Chris Snyder is the only man to have that honor in the Diamondbacks clubhouse. Well, it's one thing to be a five o'clock hitter, but it's another to be one that hits at 7 p.m. Snyder's been hitting at 7 p.m. as well. One and two the count. Single, double, run scored, a pair of RBIs. Gracie, as you talked about, the bases loaded 2 0 situation he was in before. The dream of every hitter. Time though on one two pops it up. I know you and I were downstairs today and bumped into Doug Davis and immediately Doug stuck his hand out and said, "Guys, I just want to let you know I found out this morning I'm cancer free. Went through all of the final testing. Obviously, he will be monitored for a long, long time. But uh, the the surgery as well. You saw on April 10th and a couple of minor league rehab starts. And you want to talk about a guy that was." Bouncing through his steps today. Congratulations. And I was talking with Mark McLuhan during the pregame show, and we mentioned that. And that's so much more important than this baseball game. I mean, it really is. Big jump, stolen base. Fleet of foot, Sheriff, today. But we're, we're talking about Doug Davis and, and just the human being, the person, is so much more important than, than this baseball game. So that is, that just made my day when we heard that. Doug, of course, found a way to, to get in a dig on me. We've been together for a while. Covered him when he was in Milwaukee. He said, you know, Seth, I have that. I want to tell you that. I'm very excited. Because I know most of the time you're at a loss for words for things to say during the game. <laughs> he does know you. Clay Condry warms in the pen. Charlie Manuel's club. Down six. Brandon puts it in play, and the inning comes to an end. I just want to square one up, he said this morning. Well, he's done so right there. Oh, you got to love the sheriff. D backs baseball and FS in Arizona brought to you by Penn's Oil, not just oil. Penn's Oil and by Gila River Casinos. Is this your lucky day? Chase Field. You can see we have the windows open, though our roof is closed here at Chase. Speaking of closing, Brandon Webb has so far. You see our window closed down the Phillies starting lineup. One hit through five innings, an unearned run without a walk and three strikeouts. Brad Harmon, one for eight in the big leagues, will pinch hit. 0 oh, and 1 the count. And one of those days. Brandon Webb's made a lot of hitters put towels over their heads. <laughs> last three years. Tough to find many better. Chris Young 
takes a few steps and stops dead in his tracks and puts that one away. The native of Fern Tree Gully, Australia. Huh? Retired. Oh, yeah, I thought you'd like that. Fern Tree Gully. Now, are you going to break out a atlas and show me where Fern Tree Gully, Australia is on the plane ride to Chicago, maybe? Absolutely. Thank you. I'd love to find out. Maybe visit there. One of the reasons I know where it is is I got a postcard four days ago from Todd Walsh. Yeah. Greetings from Fern Tree Gully. I love it. I, I've been wondering where he is. Legoland, Fern Tree Gully. And Euro Disney. Euro Disney. It's nice. By the way, when he was in France at Euro Disney, to tie into the art that you love, he was at the Louvre. At the Louvre. Victorino. I've been to the Louvre. I'm lying. I haven't been to the Louvre. I thought you'd tell us it was big league. I'd love to go to the Louvre. I've never been. I've never been to Paris. But I have been in the Chicago Museum of, of Art. Monet and Renoir. It's big league. I mean big league. Uh oh. That's not good when that happens. Now, how does sunglasses end up that far when you're going for a ball? I think he dove See, out he, to try to get it, and his glasses kept going, and he stopped. Change up, and he wouldn't bite. Explaining it to all his friends. The three-two, slapping it the other way. Eric Burns under and out. Very economical. I mean, very economical. 71 pitches. Just throwing strikes, pounding the strike zone. Diamondbacks could use a CG, a complete game out of Brandon Webb today. Their bullpen's been throwing a lot of innings, now throwing a lot of good innings. Let's not kid ourselves. Got bit a little bit last night. If anybody deserved a, a speed bump, it's those fellas out in the bullpen. Inside corner. Webb has retired eight in a row and 17 of 18. It's a leadoff single by Victorino. He hit Bruntley. That's it. That's the only other base runner outside of that Victorino single to start the game. Single right back through the box. What is it with Eric Bruntley? He doesn't want to lose his job. He knows Jimmy Rollins is probably on an airplane right now. Second baseman Chase to meet the Ogden. Phillies in their next destination, which means playing time is going to be few and far between for Bruntley. But I'll tell you what, he's impressed Charlie Manuel, I'm sure, with the job he's done, and then some. Philadelphia Phillies heading west here in Arizona then off to San Francisco where Rollins will meet them and is expected to be in the starting lineup tomorrow. Jay Sutley off the glove of Burke. Burke recovers to the bag and he beat him that time. Phillies traveling west. Diamondbacks that traditional trip to Chicago. Taking a look at Miller Lite. What's brewing? Seven to one the score. Let's open up a tall cold one. Oh boy, tomorrow. Gracie sings, take me out in the seventh inning. Am I? Well, you already heard it earlier today. How's my voice sound, Darren? About like it does during the broadcast. If a Brillo pad could talk, it would sound like my voice. I, I thought it sounded great. Well, thanks. You gonna help me tomorrow? Oh no. Why not? Uh, it's not really my place. I'm not the legend of Chicago. Whoa! Slow down, honey. Left fielder Eric Burns. I just don't know if they'll welcome me.
And in time for the out. Down it. All right, let's remember. Oh boy. Oh boy. Sing along, Darren. Oh no. Take me out to the There's my old manager, Bob Brindley, over there. Let's see how it sounds together. I don't care if I ever get back. So let's root. Root, root for the Cubbies. And you know why I said that, don't you? Why is that? I was a little concerned. Well, I got I got some some grief for saying that. And I understand that Diamondback fans probably say, you know what, Grace, that's wrong. You're an employee of the Arizona Diamondbacks and da 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 And they would be right. Mm -hmm. But I looked at it as a very good dear friend of mine, Harry Carey. I got you. That's a tribute to him, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Having the guests take me out to the ball. That's a tribute to the greatest announcer of all time. You're a close second, Darren. But... <laughs> But it's just a tribute to, to Harry Carey, so I sang it the way Harry would want it sang. And I like that. I was a little better than Ozzy Osbourne, wasn't I? Yes. Bouncing ball, Augie Ojeda, and a nice play. I just don't know, Mark Grace, if they would welcome the likes of me up there. I just don't think they would, do you? Well, I, I don't think that I really ever played for the Cubs, first of all. Well, there's a lot of people that sing it that didn't play for the Cubs. Yeah, they're famous and important people, though. Well, I mean, former like, presidents like, like and us, actors. Well, for instance, uh, Mike Ditka. Okay. Awful. Great, great coach, and he is a fixture and a legend in Chicago, but awful. Take me out to the ballgame, singer. So, Ozzy Osbourne. If you're from Chicago, folks, Mike Ditka, Darren Sutton. <laughs> Jeff Gordon. There you Welcome. go. It's great to be back at Wrigley Stadium. Chris Young to his left. Dobbs makes the play for the out. Darren, I want, come on, help me out. Come on, please. You'll do it with me, won't you? No. to have you back top of the seventh inning Arizona leads it seven to one our core is like frost brood freeze cam I'll freeze it right down Broadway <coughs> excuse me Gracie <laughs> I got so choked up because it's every hitter's dream it's holy true. cow it made that big sound off that <laughs> left field fence even my partner got choked up big shift defensively Hello, Mr. Sutton. You have a cough button you can use if you'd like to. <laughs> oh, the, right the, oh, the big boy. fella Ryan Howard hit it right into the shift. That's the shortstop, folks. That's Stephen Drew. Oh, there's the second baseman. Right into the shift it goes. And Brandon Webb is just locked in. <laughs> Very interesting moment after I coughed into your living room. And my apologies. I'm not contagious. Is, uh, is the fact that as Howard grounded out, you know, in our great city where a lot of people, it's a melting potter from around this of country. Course, There's right. some Philly fans out here. Of course. And we, we saw him getting a little bit rowdy when we did the pool game on Monday night. Right. Ryan Howard just got booed here at Chase Field by the Philly fans that came to the game. How quickly they forget what this kid has done the last three years for the Philadelphia Phillies. So if you're even thinking of booing that kid, think twice, folks. That's not cool. And a good kid, too. Exactly. As a person. It's not cool at all. But, you know, you pay your money. You're allowed to do whatever you want to do. Now, I understand that. But understand just how much that kid has meant to this Philly organization the last three years. That's why I told you that. And he is a notoriously slow starter. But when he gets it going, look out National League. One and two the count Jeff Jenkins. Change up kicks away from Snyder stays right on it. Chris Burke makes the strikeout official. How's that change up looking these days Darren. You know he decided to, to work on it in the offseason. We needed to add a third pitch. 
Well, now as he added a third pitch, Darren, it may want be one of the better changeups in the game. And I and I'm talking about Trevor Hoffman, Greg Maddox, guys with notoriously great changeups. Brandon Webb's might be just as good as theirs, maybe even better. Well, to me, the thing that when you talk about it, it's more similar to Greg Maddox's in the sense that as the curveball, he drops one of those in there. It just has the exact same movement as his fastball, which is for Maddox and for Webb sinking. But yet, it's 15 miles an hour slower sometimes. Making it look easy. This is an absolute gem. An absolute gem. D backs baseball live on FSN Arizona is back and Reggie Sanders. This is more like it. D backs leading the Phils 7 to 1 and obviously a great starting effort from Brandon Webb. Well, you see what happens when I come back. <laughs> you know, we start scoring runs, so it's very good to see this uh, team uh, start to score more runs. I'm really excited about that. And of course, we'll break it all down as soon as the game is done. And I'm guessing we'll probably talk about that man right there as Brandon Webb looks to go at 8 and 0 on the season, guys. Looking forward to chat with you after the game as well. Reggie's back. And I'll tell you what, with some slick gear on, yeah. Reggie, you're He's making us look shame. bad. I know, exactly. Uh, Reggie, you know better than to show up your teammates. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just sharply dressed out there, all buttoned up. Here we are in our golf shirts. I guess we'll talk baseball with you. You made us look bad. We'll talk to you in a bit, guys. Thank you, brother. <laughs> look sharp, didn't he? I'll tell you what, our female viewership just skyrocketed. <laughs> oh, one and one the count. We jumped back. Wow, we're all untucked with jeans on on our. Hey, we're going to Chicago, folks. That's out towards Reggie Sanders, and it's gone. How about that cleanup hitter? He's 20. <laughs> That's a long ways to hit a ball to right field, too. Justin Upton. Uh-huh. Talk a little smack back at the boys. I like that. Diamondbacks needed a game like this where they could show a good baseball team, a team they're playing the Philly. Show them who's boss. The sound, Gracie. I know you love this sound. Golly. Oh, that's good to see. Well, you pin down scouts and you get them to talk about the bat speed of Justin Upton, you will get some very, very eyebrow raising comparisons. Well, our colleague Reggie Sanders, he had pop. He didn't have pop the other way like this, and I know Reggie can hear me. <laughs> oh, my goodness, was that ball hammered. There aren't many who do have pop like that. Steven Drew. Pitch down and away, and he is retired. Clay Condry, our all tell call to the bullpen. Nine games, it's been tough work for him. Yeah, that kind of bat speed that we're talking about. There's a two by that home runs now. Oh, that's right. As that one is low, one and oh the count. Thanks to that man. Jay up, as Sut likes to call him. Sut and the governor. Does he approve that? Oh yeah. One and one the count. How about a four hit day for the sheriff? That would be nice. A couple of singles. I'm sorry, three singles. And to the count. A lot of Philly fans here. Whoa! John Crux down there. Good to see him. Well, it's good to see Crux. He made it out here. Hey, there's John. Back 
of that jersey, says John Crook. There you go. Because that is John Crook. Always oh, nice to have him around. It's funny how he can be in Bristol, Connecticut last night and then still make it out here for the ball game this afternoon. Crookie. Boy, he could hit. Good guy. Fun to be around. Oh, John. Now nah, we're teasing, folks. That's not John Crook. But, but John Crook was was and is one of the one of the fun guys. The guys that gets it. It's kind of an old school Philly Road uniform. I, like I love that. that. That's the one Pete Rose wore. That's the one you see now. That's the home uniform. Yeah, I like that. I like well, the blue. I, I like that, but if you're going to be John Crook, you got to wear your hat right. Oh, okay. I want the bill. Whoops. I want the bill turned around. Got to wear it right. Well, he's a younger man, though. Doesn't matter. He's not a traditionalist. Doesn't matter. Turn that. I want the bill right out there. That's where I want. He didn't play back in the 60s. Doesn't matter. Neither did Crock. Over the top. Snyder goes down on strikes. Ah, uh, Crocky. Worth a mention every time. Brandon has been fabulous, but he's had some help. Chris Young getting things going. Two run shot, first inning. Oh, that's not all. Base is loaded. Chris Snyder, fourth inning. Nine Diamondbacks batted in the inning. Four came around to score all told. Snyder having a fabulous day. And the Sheriff, Mark Reynolds, with a three hit day. He's got a stolen base. He's got an RBI. He's got a run scored. Chris Young, Snyder, Reynolds all pitching in. And so Taguchi. Stephen Rue, leaping, throwing. He got it. Wow, what a play by Stephen. They've stepped it up today in every area. That first inning was forgettable, but since then, they've been a, a bunch that we expect to see. Well, they've been that athletic, gifted team that we've been seeing all year long. That's a jam shot. And the jump and gets a lot on the throw, gets it over there on the fly. And Taguchi runs very well, and Stephen Drew got him. Owen won the count to Chris Coast. 85 pitches for Brandon Webb. He's been in a rocking chair all day out there. Fly ball back up short. Here comes Eric Burns. Stephen Drew going back between the Bermuda Triangle. That one drops in. Second baseman, Brad Harmon. Pretty athletic, wouldn't you say, Darren? Very athletic. We've talked about that, and we'll continue to talk about it. A guy like Stephen Drew and Justin Upton, they haven't done it yet in the big leagues, but these are guys that, because of their speed and athleticism, as Harmon takes a strike, can steal 25 to 30 bases, as well as all the other things they will do. That man nearly swiped 30 last year. Bouncing ball. And get back in that rocking chair, Mr. Webb. On a front porch in Kentucky sits Brandon Webb and his rocker. And what a gorgeous day it is. FSN Arizona presents D backs baseball brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines, you're now free to be more productive. Visit Southwest.com today. By Brown and Brown Chevrolet, we're still the one. We just missed your sign. Oh, doggone it. That looks like a, a, a Sutton sign. I got to tell you, folks, I don't know if I've told you this before, but we need more signs <laughs> at the ballpark. If you've heard me say, I don't think I've mentioned it at all this year. What kind of signs should they be, Darren? Mark Gray signs. <laughs> Owen won the count, Chris Burke. 
Good or bad? Anything. Just bring them. I don't know if you knew this, but Chris Burke is a big bobblehead collector. Is he? Several hundred. I did not know that. Well, he is. And he is a guy that, well, all of us are. As that one grabs the inside corner, and he will be on hand on Saturday, May 17th, as the D-backs take on the Tigers, and the Chris Young bobblehead is handed out. And he will add to his collection, 602-514-8400. Or visit dbacks.com and he can add to his collection. Has there ever been a Darren Sutton bobblehead? Like in Milwaukee? There or? was. Really? So he, so if he's a big bobblehead collector, he's probably got one of yours. He does. That's awesome. Hot shot. Let's take a look at our APS in-game box score. And you can see Chris Burke picking up a hit, picking up an RBI. This is kind of an everybody pitch in kind of day. Eric Burns has had a quiet day. And a nice ovation for Brandon Webb as ah, he is in that. It's good to see these knowledgeable fans giving it up for, for a guy that's been just a lot of fun to deal with this year. Fun to watch, fun to cover, fun to talk to. Beat that out. Two away. Want to remind everyone that prorated season tickets are on sale now. Choose from the full. That means they'll be there every time. See Brandon pitch every time out. The half every other game. The series. Weekender. If you're into coming on the weekend, visit dbacks.com. 602 462 4600. The likes of Justin Upton and his development. I'm looking forward if I were to pick up a package seeing Justin Upton. And Gary Sheffield play in the same ball game because some have compared the bat speed of those two. Well, one thing nobody can compare is the amount of promos you can read in one half an inning. Oh, watch me go, baby. That was impressive. Stick with me. I'll well, take Well, I mean, I can't even ask you to read them anymore. You won't let me. You just zip right through them. <laughs> we have a new format, by the way. Do we? Oh, yeah. Just all promos all the time? <laughs> no, not all promos. You want to play with one? I would love to. Pick pick one of the ones we've already done. One of the ones we've already done. How about the, uh, how about the Chris Young bobblehead one? How well, about that one? It's bullet points, folks. It's not a read anymore. And for those, including me, who have no idea what bullet points are, we'll just do the best we can with this. Uh, Darren, do you have any uh, bobbleheads? Uh, no, I don't. You don't? No, I I have one of yours from last year. Well, would you like a, a Chris Young bobblehead? How can I get one? I mean, he's this year he's already sitting on eight home runs. What do I have to do? Well, you and 24,999 other people. Saturday, May 17th against the Tigers, we'll get a free Chris Young bobblehead. Now, if they're anything like your, if your children are anything like mine, they will rip the head right off the Chris Young bobblehead. So, it will not bobble anymore. And if you're interested in that, folks, tickets are available at 602-514-8400 or dbacks.com. That gets the Sutton stamp of approval. Bullet points! Do you love bullet points? I'll tell you what. Send me an email. We'll discuss it on the conference call. Each game in this game is eight to one, but each game you have to watch for the Camaro to win tickets to an upcoming game or an autographed item. Go to VanChevrolet.com to enter the word. Each entry is not only a chance to win that day's prize, but a chance to win a new Camaro. Stay tuned for D-backs live post game. We will announce today's winner. Base hit right field Shane Victorino. As all lies now on. The right hander and the ace of this staff Brandon Webb looking to take it to the house. And if you want to think about how much they believe he can take it to the house we, we need to take a peek down at that bullpen where not a creature is stirring. Tumbleweeds out there blowing around in the bullpen. No action. Is that great. Wah, wah, wah. 
Stolen base. Is that a stolen base or defensive indifference? They got to give him a stolen base there. Last complete game last year, and of course that was all part of the 42 consecutive scoreless innings. I'll never forget that game. I'll never forget that series in Atlanta. Line drive center field. It's a base hit. Victorino comes on around. He will score. It is eight to two. Mind everyone. Here is your SRP cool change tip of the game for every run the D back score this season. They've done a great job today. SRP will plant 10 Four trees. Play, sorry, number 51, Carlos Ruiz. Eric Brunt. Get him out of here. My goodness. <laughs> we don't want to see him again for a while. Carlos Ruiz. He'll pinch hit for the pitcher's spot. That was pitch number 92 in the ninth inning. Oh, and two the count. Just a little bit of tossing going on out there. It's not hardcore fast work, not yet. Change up. Thought about going, but did not. We were talking about Andy Hawkins in 1985 starting 10 and 0. In how many starts does it say? That's starting off perfect in perfect each start. Ten, really? Okay. We still got a little ways to go then, Brandon. Should Brandon win, he would join John Garland in 05, Pedro in 97, Dave Stewart of the A's in 98. Fernando in 1981, Roger Moray in 1973, and Billy Pierce in 1962 to win their first eight starts of the season. If you go back over the last 50 years of Major League Baseball. In other words, folks, it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do, and you know, a lot of things have to happen. You have to you obviously pitch very, very well, but you have to get the offensive support. Well, his last start's a good example. Yeah. Six innings, four runs. In, in your mind, that is a crummy start. I believe in the quality start stat. I don't think that was a crummy start, though. It just wasn't a quality start. So it was a less statistic. It was a less than quality start in your mind. Statistically. He's getting plenty of support. Yeah, I can tell you and that. That's another reason that he's <laughs> looking at 8 0 right in the mouth. Because he's getting a lot of help from his friends offensively. That man hit a two run long ball today, Chris Young. You got to have a catcher that is right there with you. It also helps for two run doubles for Chris Snyder and another. And the sheriff! Offensively and defensively was rock solid today. Howard a lightning bolt into right field. Upton gets it back in. This will score another run. 8-3 the score. Pitch number 99. I am Price. We'll go to talk with him first. Yeah, this is unfortunate to see. A couple of runs here on Brandon Webb. Some, some oh by the ways. Boy, Chris Snyder, that was a great shot we had there. He did not want to see Bob Melvin trying to say he's all right. Let him finish. Let's see what happens. Let's see if Bob Melvin comes out and has a thing. You know, his word is law. He'll decide who pitches and who doesn't. Let's see if he gets the answer he wants from Brandon Webb. That there you was go. A short conversation. Yeah, good for you, Bob Melvin. Ninety nine pitches. Here's Jeff Jenkins. One and oh the count. 
0 for 3 today. And three hits in the opener of this series against Max Scherzer. Change up and a dandy. That's all he has to do is just break out the off speed stuff. He's just kind of been going fastball, fastball, or sinker, sinker to these guys and laying it right in there. Now he's got to go back to pitching. Start working corners again, mix in your off speed stuff. Try to get a ground ball to end the game. Because if he gives up one more run, this will won't go down as a quality start. Two and one the count. Lifts it into the seats, two and two. Jenkins in his career against Webb is three for 23. With two long balls. We're looking for a ground ball here, folks. I'm thinking change up right here, Darren. What are you thinking? I like it. Snyder spread out. Webb knocks it down. There's one. And double play, and that's the ball game. Good thing you left him in. <laughs> a complete game for Brandon Webb. In his first eight starts, he has won every single one of them, and he is our quest player of the game, Brandon Webb. 8 and 0 for the Diamondbacks. Now it's only fitting after a meeting on the mound and a short one at that that you leave him in. A bad handle line drive right back up the box, knocks it down. Perfect feed and a perfect way to end the ball game. 5 and 5 on the home stand, Darren. They salvaged the home stand at 5 and 5. They split the series and you can see Eight plus wins to start the season since 1980. Joining that group there, eight and zero. The Diamondbacks are 23 and 12. They're still the best team in Major League Baseball. They hit on the road, 14 and seven at home. It's off to Chicago, Illinois. Now it's off to right field for our postgame show. Well, the Arizona Diamondbacks 10 game homestand is over today against the Phils. A chance to even up their stay at five and five thanks to another dominating performance by Brandon Webb. They get it done eight to three the final. Welcome to Quest d -backs Live. Brad Steinke pleased to be joined again by Reggie Sanders. We're going to send it right down to the field. Brandon Webb a perfect eight no on the season. Mark McClune take it away. That's right. Brandon Webb going to eight no on the season. Now tell me is there a more satisfying feeling as a starting pitcher than to go the distance. No that's what we're looking to do every time is go out there and finish the game. Uh, these guys in the bullpen have been doing a heck of a job for me all year. Uh, you know and I wanted to go out there and try to give them a try to give them a break. They really picked me up and then uh, you know I was able to do that today. Bob Melvin came out in the ninth inning that appeared to be the shortest conversation in big league history. What was said? Well before he got out there me and Snides were like Snides goes you're finishing this. And I was like yeah. So he, he comes out and he's like hey you fine and I'm like all right and he's like give you one more guy. And that's how it was. Cut and dried and then uh, end up getting a double play to finish it. You're 8 no just like 2006. Is there a difference this year and how do you keep up this momentum. It's it's tough to keep up momentum like you know it, it's going to I'm going to lose some time but uh, you know, I feel great out there right now. The guys are really scoring me runs. I mean, I had I gave up one run in the first inning. The guys came out in the, in the bottom of the first and got me a lead with uh, scoring two runs. That was huge for me. After that, I just uh, settled in and, and uh, you know did my job. And dangerous at the plate. We like the, the pull the bunt back. If that would have worked, that would have been uh, uh, tremendous. Where did you pick that up at? Oh, uh, we practice it every day. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It was something that the, you know they were both crashing in, and and if you bunt if you bunt the ball uh, halfway decent, you know they're still going to probably get it get an out at that uh, the lead out. So I pulled back and ended up trying to. Slash and it uh, didn't work, but uh, caught him by surprise. I think though. And finally, did this team need a win like this? Just a big win to get some momentum to go to Chicago. Yeah, I think so. This was, a, you know, not the home stand we, we wanted, but uh, you know, we come out all right in it. Won the last game heading into Chicago, so that'll uh, hopefully build some momentum for uh, for this weekend. Great, we'll let you go get ice to get on a plane. Thank Thanks you. for stopping. Thank Brandon you. Webb goes to eight and zero. We're going to go inside the Diamondbacks clubhouse, get more reaction to Brandon Webb's complete game win. But for now, let's kick it back out to the Miller Lite Diamond Club. Brad Reggie, take it away. Well, thanks. Interesting. 
interesting that conversation with Bob Melvin. He gives him one more guy. He gets Jenkins to ground into the uh, the double play to end the game. Uh, pretty succinct. 18 ground ball outs tonight for Brandon Webb. He had his stuff, did he well, not? You're absolutely right. And the reason why I love Brandon Webb, he's a guy that wants the ball every single time. He wants to give his bullpen a rest. He knew how important it is going to it's going to be in Chicago. So he took it on his shoulders. He told Bob, you know, step back. I'm okay. <laughs> I, I, can, I can finish this game, and he did that. He's kind of a throwback. A guy that wants to go the distance. His 13th complete game of his career. Time now for our turning point of the game and this one took place in the bottom of the fourth inning after back to back walks to start this inning. Mark Reynolds who had been struggling just a bit shatters the bat and good hustle as he beats out the play and that led to a big inning for these D-backs. Well it really did and I, I love the hustle because what it does it motivated the team and then you see Snyder coming up here uh, with the bases loaded and hitting a double off left field wall to drive in two runs. Yeah they, they answered the run that the Phil's got in the first team with two of their own and again Brendan Webb 6.7 runs of run support during every one of his starts this season. Yes. This team goes out and goes above and beyond when B Webb is on the hill. Stick around we're just getting cranked up here. We come back we'll hear from the guys who called our game Darren Sutton Mark Grace how about the play from Stephen Drew fielding throwing D-backs do it again. Steve. 